right that and that it may work for a couple of years but like long term it, it won't because well it's it's obvious right if your delivery isn't great then client retention won't be great like am i going to give five years of energy and then burn out and die after you know another five years and and this is like when i was actually listening to a book the other day and it's talked about ratios of what we give up in order to get freedom like so a lot of people trade five days of work for two days of freedom freedom the, the weekend and that's a terrible trade five for two Welcome to the Awaken Man podcast. Welcome. This is a, yeah, good to see you. I'm actually seeing you in person a couple of days. Pete's flying out to Dubai for a holiday this time, right? Yeah, yeah, holiday. We'll, we'll get in a podcast, but other than that, sun, more sun, bit of relaxation, done, that's it. Yeah, I think one of the things, decisions we, I've talked about recently is turning pro with a podcast. And this is something that I've been sharing with a lot of guys as well, is this idea of turning pro. We are fully committed to making the Awaken Man podcast, not just a, a hobbyist experience, not for you listeners, it's to get world-class guests, world-class speakers, world-class sessions. So you can tune in. And when you tune in, you're having a really great experience because a lot of what we're sharing is really resonating with listeners like yourself. If you're a guy listening to this podcast and you're hearing stuff that you like, do us a, few, you know, a little favor on the way in. Go and hit the follow button. You know, as you listen to this podcast, if you can just head on over and hit the follow button because we want to reach more guys like you with our great stuff. So without- yeah, Also, it, it just fucking, it just massages our ego a little bit. I'll be honest. Right, it does, and it's not, but it's good because it. <laughs> it's me being selfish because my ego gets massaged, and I'm like, yes, we're climbing up the ranks. I can see the reviews going up. This is good. It's also bloody nice to read when we get a, a review from one of you guys yeah. listening. I'm telling you, it's so nice. It's like makes my day, makes my week, right? And then in turn, me and Ben are like, we need to make this better. Let's let's do more podcast episodes. Let's up this to like three a week. Let's do more content. So it's like I'm being selfish, but then it helps you guys the listeners as well. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree because like this is uh, just out of you know the the business side of the podcast is that when we go looking for good guests, one of the first things they look at is our ratings and reviews. So if you think about this, is they're going to look at our rating reviews, they're going to see what kind of guests we've got on, they're going to see what kind of level the podcasts are, and they'll decide based on that. You know, I just been in this process over the last couple of weeks looking for guests and that's the first thing they go to so if you want great guests to come on and share some incredible stuff give us a rating and review it really does help i know we're gonna we, look guys we're gonna segue into talking about business structure in a second and ben will talk through the four things that we're going to talk about in today's podcast but one thing ben said at the start of the episode here was about turning pro to do with the podcast and i want to just raise something on that like this should be a level and a standard that you have in every facet of your life so it's like hey i'm going to go and hit the gym don't go and hit the gym and just do a mediocre or weak or half ass workout no just like turn pro in the gym like turn into a savage turn into arnold schwarzenegger when you get in there right and really and really hit it hard and, and really have a good workout same with your diet don't just like half ass it and lame it and uh, oh, do you know what i'll eat like 50 50% good and then 50% like seafood diet, whatever I see. Because great, it might taste good in the moment, but then it just fucks up your brain later on. Like you've got like cloudy judgment and then you don't feel so good and then you're tired. Right, but this should be everything. Like your, just, your standard is pro. Like you're an athlete in every area. If you look at every area of your life like that, it'll all elevate. Yeah, and actually just some data to back up what Pete said there is that when we decided to turn pro first time, <laughs> we were going, we, we started this podcast two years ago. We treated it like a hobbyist. We treated it like we'll get round to it. It was an afterthought. And then Pete and I decided we'll put it in our calendars. We'll prep for it. We'll make sure we get good conversations, you know, simmering away in the in the background, right, ready for you. And as soon as we turned pro, we went from, I think it was like 70 total listeners to something like 700 listeners in a week. And then we turned that from 700 to like 7,000. We're getting a, a thousand listeners month on month now and it, it's getting faster and faster it's growing and that can i would say i would say that tracks back to when we've continually recommitted to being a pro and it's not that we've taken our foot off the gas it's that there's a new level of professionalism that we can go to like even pete sent me a, a video today where we're going to look at how we can get multi-channel videos in so for a visual experience for those you watch on youtube so it's like again that was another commitment to going more pro on the podcast and i'm like so i've spent my afternoon in my subconscious 
working out how can we do that how can we do that with pete and med in me in dubai can we do that actually we've got the pods studio over here in dubai we're going to go and experience that again all of this is a commitment to you as a listener to bring you the best quality content as part of the movement we're creating for men to help actualize the potential anyway let's get into things today because i want to give you this today i think it's a really important message and session that's going to help you massively it's about business structure and actually sitting and pete and i can both attest to this we sit on calls with guys every single day who've got various various business structures or career structures and what we want to talk about is why men should really really think about the the structure that they create their business in or their life in really but we're going to speak to mainly you business folk out there is that you want to make a decision between being a creator versus an entrepreneur because so many people me, me included i don't know about you pete you can share on a second i started out in the the fitness world as a creator i just loved the, the craft i just so happened to run a business around the craft and what we often find when we have men who come to work with us is that they struggle with the business side of the business and what they haven't paid enough attention to is the way that they structure their business are they a creative are they an entrepreneur what work do they need to and what skills gaps do they need to amend in order to get to where they want to be. Pete, do you want to share on that before we just go into the the next one? Uh, Yeah, this doesn't just, it isn't just, so create is a good word, right? But another word for this is technician. Because there'll be a lot of guys that will have that creative mindset and will respond to that word. But I know a shit ton of guys, and maybe myself included in this, that started off like as a technician. So like we got really good at the technical aspects of doing a profession. Like architecture, for example. Like I got qualified in that. I got good at that. Right. And then I set up a business and I was like, oh shit, got to learn business. But I know loads of other guys that like got really great at like engineering or or electrical work or like accounting work or something like that. Right a professional service really really highly skilled at that and then decide to set up a business and it's like ah great I I can't just deliver my amazing service there's a whole host of other things that I need to think about here and structure like the actual business model itself being a key component of that because if you don't get that right early doors you could go through years and years of heartache and hell following the wrong structure I can tell you not just from my own experience there but from also just seeing other loads and loads and loads of guys coming in and one of the first things that we will look at as a group or if either Ben or I are doing like one-to-one consultative work from a business the first thing we'll look at is like well let's have a look at the model right let's just see if the model like is flawed from the word go or whether we just need to make some tweaks or we need to do a full revamp or whether you've got a good model and you just need to up your prices or something like that right so structure is important it's it's the slingshot really isn't it it's like it's the slingshot if you get the slingshot right you can pull back very a short pullback means a, a long throw and I think that's the thing that most guys maybe either need tweaking or like Pete said a revamp and we're going to go through that we're going to go, you know, walk through that There's some good stuff we're going to share on that we're going to talk about business building with the end in mind now there is a book called built to sell and it's it's the the book that you need to read if you want to build a business to sell but i think a lot of business owners never really think that far ahead i know you know know various points in my career i was barely thinking about what i'm doing tomorrow let alone what i'm going to be doing in 20 years time and it was actually my business partner mark who said to me dude what do you want to do with this business and i was like oh i'm in it for life i'm in it till i'm you know that's what was my answer at the time and i think so many men haven't really decided they're going to sell exit is it going to be a legacy business do they want to sit on a board you know how do they want to franchise it do they want to you know scale it they haven't asked those questions or answer those questions. So the way that they're building the business in the moment is is kind of sporadic. It's not got really an intentional way of, of going about things. And so you often see that with guys. They haven't started with the end in mind and they start doing something that is way off what they want to do 20 years down the line. This is a really important thing to consider when you're thinking about your business structure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Next point we'll get into, I'll have a little chat with you guys just on uh, like a typical journey that an entrepreneur can take and a roadmap around that and what that looks like from start all the way to finish, how long that might take, the road, the the bumps and the hurdles you might have to go through. Yeah. And then you might go, do you know what? I like that part of the journey or I like like 0.5 of that journey and that's where I want to get to. Yeah. This is like Pete's underselling himself a little bit. This is Pete knows this, like I, I always say a mile deep. This is, we're probably going to do another the seven part series on this topic because this is something that you know, I think that you need to share with the world Pete 
think it's like Pete's knowledge of this stuff about how to structure and model a business is his like jam. And I think this will be super powerful just, just sharing on today's call. So if you're listening in, guys, really pay attention to that part of today's call. I think it's going to be the best part call podcast, whatever this thing is. <laughs> and finally, we're going to share a little bit about what we want from business. So we got onto that as well. So I think just, you know, sometimes being in the company of guys, like I've literally just got off the Awake Man call and we've just, the, the first 10 minutes, a guy had one minute to share exactly what he fucking wanted in his life. And it was amazing to watch guys getting really clear. Like even over the work we've done over the last couple of weeks, if we would have asked those guys the same question three weeks ago, they wouldn't have been able to articulate it as well. And there's a whole host of issues that come up in business partnerships, long-term relationships, in your relationship with your partner. If you are not clear on what you want, Poppy and I had a hard conversation about this last week. So getting really clear on what we want, being very, very clear about that, having a strong opinion about that and being able to articulate what you want is so important in terms of your business structure. I want to build a hobby business. I want to build a professional business. I want to have a, you know, a business that's going to be able to sell. And we're going to go into that. So stick around, guys, get your notepad get yourself a coffee. So let's start. Okay. So I think this is important. The creative versus the entrepreneur. Okay. So a, a creative is someone who uses their imagination or artistic skills to generate new ideas, designs, or work, work of art. They are often driven by a desire to express themselves or communicate a message through their creative output. Like I shared before, one of the th- major drivers for me as a fitness expert was I was really passionate about helping people change their health. And that was a big, big driver for me. So my creative expression was the workouts that I wrote every single day, the diet plans that I created with a client, the way that I consulted as a technician was so important to me. Like I got, I went to, I went on courses, I did all sorts of things to make sure I was a great, great technician. And that was a big driver for my business in my twenties. And it just so happened, I got that good at it that the money followed. However, I do feel that when it's like, what got you here won't get you there. You can be an incredible technician, but at some point there will be a decision about the business you create where you actually need to start operating a little bit more like an entrepreneur. So can you go through the entrepreneur first, Pete? Yeah, I was just going to jump back into the creative part there because I think it's important to, because I don't personally associate with like the creative part, but I would associate with being like the technical part, like the operational part. And and it's just like you guys that run like engineering businesses or electrical businesses or plumbing businesses or whatever that looks like, right? Accounting, legal services and so on. You're really great at your craft and consistently get better at that doing courses and accreditations and more training and getting more experience on the job and just like getting really really great at that and and that's phenomenal and, and so it's like you that you're really really good at the fulfillment part so like the fulfillment part you're exceptional at but like the other part of the business which is really important which is like the marketing and the sales and the advertisement and so on like the front end part of the business can can sometimes lack when like a technical person or a creative person just comes in and just focuses on fulfillment and not some of the front end stuff or even some of the back end stuff of like retention and operations and upsells and resells and so forth right they just really focus on being on fulfilling which is great and you want that and you need that but there's other hats you need to you need to put on right which is where the like the entrepreneurial hat will then come in just a great entrepreneur just solves problems so they find a problem that needs solving they solve that problem knowing that they're providing great fucking value and great service to the world but also knowing their worth here so then they're charging good money for that so they can make a profit that's the key part we need to make money we need to make a profit we need to solve a problem yeah i think there's a lot of pissed off creatives out there <laughs> so, as well because a creative with an entrepreneurial uh, either skill set or education will outperform a creative who's phenomenal at what they do their craft and i've said yeah. Saw that I've worked with fitness trainers who are literally world class. They are some of the best trainers in the world, but they spend so much of their time bitter and twisted because they're pissed off because they are terrible at building personal brand, showing up, marketing. They've got this inherent belief that I'm just so good, people should flock to me. And there is a level of, like you said before, Pete, a technician needs to be great at what they do. But what's more important is not being selfish that you've got a great skill and you haven't developed an area of weakness or struggle or or contraction. To get that skill out into the marketplace it can also happen the other way around though right so like you've got high entrepreneurial skills or you just you're fantastic at sales and marketing really fucking good at that front end but then the fulfillment part not so good at 
or maybe the product isn't that great or the delivery isn't that great. So really, really great at like bringing people in, getting the money in the business, but then delivery, not so good. A lot of that happens, right? That, and that it may work for a couple of years, but like long term, it, it won't because, well, it's, it's obvious, right? If your delivery isn't great, then client retention won't be great. And soon negative feedback will come in and then that will spread like wildfire and then you, you're fucked you have to start a new business but you'll be fine because if you <laughs> if you're good at the front end you just go and do it all again but it's not like there's no real longevity in that so it, it, like you have to have both and sometimes it's cool if you don't have both because you can get this is where like and we'll talk about this later when you start building a team right it's like well do you know what my my technical abilities aren't great they're okay i understand the process there but if i bring other people in that their technical abilities are really high then they can do the fulfillment and delivery work there because they're, they're ace at that and they love that and they're a players at that where and i can do the front end stuff which is the delivery and not the delivery sorry the sales and the marketing and the finances and so on yeah i think what happens is that a lot of people like you said before in the wrong role in their own business are burnt out because they're often doing things that are not they're not that's not their zone of of competence excellence or or genius but they just haven't got the ability to let go of those problems and give them to someone else who can solve them faster so i think looking at business structure is so important because like ultimately if you're a guy who's struggling with his energy levels his burnout you're trying to be you know too many hats as pete said before but this is something to consider like have i set my business up in a way that is going to help me not just get a return on invest investment in terms of money but my energy like am i going to give five years of energy and then burn out and die after you know another five years and and this is like when i was actually listening to a book the other day and it's talked about ratios of what we give up in order to get freedom like so a lot of people trade five days of work for two days of freedom freedom the, the weekend and that's a terrible trade five for two and you might be creating a business where you'll spend 40 years building it to die in 10 years, like 40 years for 10, 40 years of building stress and pressure and all that stuff to it, for it not to exist beyond, you know, to not to be able to live beyond 10 years after because you had so much stress. That's not a good trade. That's really, that's a terrible trade. So when you think about how you're building your business, you really do need to think about like, how am I going to, I actually I've really, really kind of read deep think about this recently. The Awaken Man for us is a five, is you know, five years of really hard work, as in like getting it really, you know, going pro as we talked about before for a trade for the business to grow over time. And that's a that's a really important thing. And I th going back to the, the point is that starting with the end in mind is that actually what is the business going to look like beyond three, five, 10, 20 years? And how do you want to exit it, sell it, leave it as a legacy? And that these conversations, I think, are important to start thinking of if you're a business leader. Just a point to raise it, guys, before we move on to step number two, which is start with the end in mind and we'll talk about that, is just on the creator slash technician versus entrepreneur like who are you which one are you showing up more as right is it technician creator or, or are you more entrepreneurial and then just like grade yourself there on a scale of one to ten on either or and then are there skill sets that you can see that are clearly lacking and this will tie in really nicely to what we're going to talk about next we're starting in the end in mind because if there are clear skill sets that you can see that are lacking it's like right okay well there's a sale easy example there's a sales skill set right i can clearly see that I am lacking in that. Well, I've got a couple of options here. I can either go out and get a great salesman and bring them in, or I can learn the art of selling and persuasion and buying psychology right over the course of the next year and just like immerse myself into doing that and become half decent at sales. And then that will help then take my business to the next next stage and i filled that gap i think selling is a really really important one for any entrepreneur and it should be quite easy for the like owner of the business because you should be so passionate about what you do and you know it inside and out so to be able to sell is a, is a good one but it might not be selling it might be something completely different it might be like leadership right it might be management skills it might be financial skills whatever that looks like is like ham hey, there's a gap here i need to close that gap I can either go and get someone to do it for me or i can learn the skill myself over the course of the next year or six months or two months whatever that looks like even the other day we we were on a call with a consultant and he was asking about the pains and struggles of our clients and the reason we were able to articulate them so well is because both of us have sold to people who have come into the programs and it's like ah oh, yeah this guy said this and this guy said that and this is a pain point for this person and the reason that was so powerful is we understood the problems that we were trying to solve and sometimes i think that when you as the leader of the business are 
not stepping into that role and fulfilling that role, you don't understand your customers. And I think sales and especially, you know, sales consultative selling and, and being with someone and, and being in a room with them, getting really getting to know them and the str- like what that what keeps them up uh, awake at night. When you get really present and clear on that, your relationship with your customer improves, your service improves and the business improves. And I think that's such an important thing for so many business leaders to, to, to bear in mind. Let's move on to the next point, which is to start with the end in mind. Like, why should you start with the end in mind? Well, the thing that I've seen from friends who, you know, older than me and watching people who've grown businesses is that sometimes the person at the head of the business can become the bottleneck. That's the first thing. Like, so they are a, a single point of failure in the business. They're a huge single point of failure in the business because once they die, the business dies. I remember, you know, even Charles Poliquin, the, one of the famous trainers when he was, when he was alive, he was the brand of his business. He was his name name was huge and and I've I've seen that happen like what was going to happen to his training system when he passed away it's like but but he actually changed it called something called PICP and so it allowed PICP training was the the part of his training that got removed from his you know name and his brand and he actually rebranded himself as a strength sensei but that was a, a clever move to allow his business to grow into a legacy business so I think it's really important to consider this because some owners become can become baked into their business and it means that the business isn't as valuable it's not as strong long term and they actually find themselves fulfilling roles that they don't want to fulfill long into their business career yeah in the show notes here ben mentions a book called built to sell if you are a business owner you should read that book it's a fantastic book and it, and it's not necessarily about we're going to sell the business or we're going to do an exit in five years or we're going to exit in 10 15 years it's, it's not it's not about that but just having that front of mind consistently throughout your business journey in we're building it to sell it n- not necessarily going to sell it because that way you get the infrastructure in place and you remove the constraints that could come up like the example there with charles poliquin like ultimately he would have been a constraint if he didn't remove himself from the business Business, like because he did pass away if he hadn't done that then this whole legacy would have probably or the majority of it just disappeared and then it would have just been another name in in the history books whereas now it's still going on because he rebranded there and so forth so it's about thinking about might not necessarily sell the business but how can i build it as i'm gonna sell it right and get the infrastructure and get the models and get the processes and systems and the people in place and and the assets and and so forth there is a good book and, and actually another story that you can watch is ben francis story story from Gymshark you know Ben Francis was the CEO of Gymshark and he actually stepped stepped down as as a CEO role because he didn't feel like the right person to build the business to where he wanted it to go in mind so he had he knew where he wanted to take Gymshark but then he actually took the decision not to be the CEO and Steve Hewitt I think it was named it's like Steve Hewitt was the CEO role for I think think maybe five ten years I can't remember the exact amount but he then learned from Steve Hewitt and that was really uh, that's what took Gymshark shock from where they were to where they are now which is a you know first billion dollar fitness brand from the uk so definitely worth looking at that let's get into this next part because i really think it's the part that i really want to share with the audience today pete which is the entrepreneur journey can you go through the model for the entrepreneur journey because i think this will help a lot of guys work out where they are on this roadmap yeah okay cool so step Part three of this entrepreneur's journey. I took a lot of this inspiration from Daniel Priestley and he's wrote great some great books around this as well. Just clarifying this for you guys, I think my and I know I've been through this with a lot of men and it really helps them to go, ah, it just gives a little bit of direction. And when we're talking about like the end in mind as well, we don't have to know like the perfect fucking end. It's like it doesn't have to be like to a fucking T. Like even me right now, I don't really know. Like I have a direction, I have some like aspirations and I'm like, oh, I'm and I own because I've done so much work on it, but it's not to a T and it does always evolve. But what I'm going to go through now should hope, hopefully give you some direction. So I'm going to talk through start to finish a number of different business models and parts of that business model journey that you could go through. Um, so number one is startup. Okay, so this is entrepreneur venturing out into the world. You are a startup. You're in startup phase. We want to stay. We don't want to stay in this phase for any longer than two years. And this you like brand spanking you. You've got loads of ideas, you're fresh based and you're you're mega excited. There are so many flaws to this because you can be very, very reactive to absolutely everything that's going on. 
no boundaries involved here no real business acronym we're just all over the place mega mega excitement which is great because you can build this fantastic momentum from that but you can also get stuck in a hole of being very very reactive and then struggle to get out of startup mode what can happen from here is you can go into the wilderness so this is like part number two the wilderness is not a good place to be this is where like you are a solopreneur or maybe there's a couple of you this is where a startup can go from fun into okay this isn't so much fun anymore like struggling no money no time stressed burnt out right very like overwhelmed no real direction so there's like the struggling version of the of the solopreneur or like the two founders or maybe there's a couple of you or three of you right you're in the wilderness here there is another part to this there is the fun part to this where you are solopreneur or there's a couple of you and you are flourishing you got fun you got some flexibility you're earning pretty well part of the issue with this one here with not having like a big team it's just one or two of you is that the buck typically always does stop at you um so if there are issues or you, or maybe you do take a month holiday sometimes the business might stop depending on how the business is set up however like you can build fantastic solo or duo businesses if it's done right next level up so we're going to go like level three now and we're going to start thinking about teams so these are like boutique sort of businesses these are lifestyle businesses i really like these sorts of businesses but there are two elements to a lifestyle business. Number one lifestyle business is struggling. So you're a struggling lifestyle. No money, no time, you're stressed, burnt out. You're in survival mode constantly, go month to month to month. You are mostly trading your time for money. You've got it probably in the business, very, very reactive, very few or no assets there. And a key indicator, if I'm if I'm looking at a business model and I'm like, right, they've got four or five people here. What's the revenue? So I've got four or five full-time, full-time staff. Like what's the revenue? And like say like the full, the, the revenue there is two hundred and fifty thousand. I could probably tell quite easily, quickly that the business might not be doing so well and they might be going month to month there right because the revenue per employee is quite low we like numbers up into like the hundreds of thousands like revenue per employee which is a cash rich high profit business but just for like just a nice easy example like 100k 120k per employee is a good place to start just to be able to really quickly look at the fundamental lot look at the business and go okay so they've got they've got five people there they're doing 600 grand a year they're probably doing all right they're doing all right there it's not as clear cut as that but just for like an easy way just to look at businesses it's uh it works yeah. google's up in the millions right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Revenue per employee for Google, something like million, you know, a couple of million. So it's a fantastic metric to look at. And whenever I'm consulting with the business, it's one of the first metrics I look at is what's the revenue? How many, how, how many team members you got? How can we increase that? How can we keep going up? Right. Second part of the boutique styles, the lifestyle boutiques, but you're flourishing. So this is a, like a team size anywhere between four and 12. Fun, freedom, flexibility, high revenue per employee. So 150, 200K plus per employee. You've got a dynamic team. Culture is a huge, huge element for you. It's a fun place to be, high values, high energy. This is a well-structured well-oiled and organized team okay each team member knows inside out what their roles and responsibilities are they know they know exactly what they're doing day to day month to month right they know what their targets are every quarter and they're all as a team gunning towards the same direction the company may well be a local company but will look a lot bigger right so if you were to look from it from the inside out like all oh, these guys they look global they look big right but they may well just be a local business here Owner's well paid, lots of money. He's doing well or she doing well. Can take plenty of time off during the course of the year and the business will not implode. And the buck does not stop at the owner anymore. So the owners like leverage their way out of the company and team members will fulfill, do most of the fulfillment. I think uh, that's like uh, where I got to with Fast at various points. I was like a struggling boutique for a while and then I had glimmers of the lifestyle boutique. And I think that's this is where we're currently at with Awaken Man is like the lifestyle b- boutique. You know, we're, we're not struggling we've got a good amount of uh, capacity to work on the business we, we're establishing roles and responsibilities i think that's where the awake Command project is right now is a lifestyle oh boutique. absolutely this is a lifestyle boutique absolutely like we travel you know we go abroad often there's money in the business company has built plenty of assets in a short amount of time but this has only happened because we are very very aware of everything that needs to go into a business and because we've done this a few times before it's like well this time around we're gonna we know what to do we know we know what to 
implement, when to implement, who to employ first, and the speed in implementing that. Yeah, I think like something that I've learned from being around you, Pete, as well, is like, I think I read about assets, digital assets in a business just for we met. And then, and actually, you were really keen to make digital assets in Awaken Man. Like, by the way, if you're listening right now, you're listening to one of our assets, which is a podcast. You know, people listen to the podcast and we're not having to get on a call and, and tell them about what we do or tell them how we help people. You're listening to us talk about what we do. When we go to bed at night, that still will help us share our message. And I think that so many businesses that I've, you know, we live in a digital age and they haven't created any digital assets. They don't have a podcast. They don't have a blog. They don't have an email list. And, I, and that's one of my th- first things I do with a guy when I get on a call with him and I want to help him, what I call like liquidate his investments. Say a guy signs up for coaching with us. I'm like, right, we need to get that money back in your account as fast as possible. How'd you do it? And we look at their assets and I'm looking at what's available to them. And like, how many people's on your list? How many subscribers have you got? How many people followers have you got? And what I notice is that guys with good assets, a good email list, a good following they're the ones who can turn things around very very quickly yeah that's that's what i've noticed gone in the last last couple here and and by the way like the what i'm going this like what i'm going through here this journey is typical but it's not that you know there are unicorns there are things that there are routes that are different to this you might be listening thinking i'm fucking no nah, pete's fucking wrong here like i've got a two-man business and we do and that's fine like there are absolutely unicorns to this there are different things to this right but this is a typical journey and this is a great journey too the next stage here is the desert right this can be a real difficult place for a business to get themselves into i've been in this position this is when you start you breach like the 12 team members and you start growing the team what begins to happen is is the dynamics can change within a company. Like there are so many more like routes of conversation. There are so many and that, that that now becomes like, oh, do we need a level of leadership in now? Because that we've got the teams getting bigger and we've got five over there and we've got six over there. Do we need now need to get a manager in or two managers in? Oh no, we need we need any more admin staff and we probably need to office administration. And and we start to add in roles that don't necessarily generate sales or fulfill so then revenue per employee for the people in the team that do generate revenue we need to increase that the desert is really it's the scaling phase it's painful it can be a slog just like so many things can change in the business here and like when i went through this as much as i didn't want it to happen i felt like we always prided ourselves on like not being corporate we were cool we were funky but I just like I had to like bring in some more like HR procedures and some more legal procedures and and we just had to like tighten our straps a little bit in certain elements and like people leave now and now you're getting a bit of a bigger team like people hand on a notice or like things happen when you and you and you got to give a warning or and things like that things change and so you have to start bringing in these more like corporate features that, that you didn't want to before. Or we didn't want to anyway, right? And I know a lot of people can resonate with that. Cash flow can be a huge issue here because we need to generate more of it. Team's growing. And this is where we start to introduce things like KPIs. They they really, really matter here. Like every person has to be performing. And that's a desert, right? And that desert can really, really last from like team member wise, anywhere from like 13 to 40 people until you're into a position where you've got the product suite and you've got all the management levels and layers and you've got everyone performing very, very highly. And then you'll go into like two types of business here. The the two types of business are either like something called the factory, which is, this isn't like an ideal sort of business here. This is like revenue per employee is still very low. The revenue generation isn't where it needs to be cash flow is, is constantly being drained it's been sucked out of the business month and month and month typically like your highest performers here aren't rewarded so they may leave and you'll have to go through like continuous cycles of like overhead cuts and so on right that's like the factory the other one which is a really sexy one is performance business this is where and this can i say up to 40 people it may it may well be that you can do this when you, you're in your like 30s like 30 30 people plus 30 to 150 people here. This is result driven. It's scalable. It's all about strategy, right? It is a serious culture of high performance, high energy, high focus. The company will have a great, great brand, fantastic brands, got a lot of recognition, serious assets around that. One big team of high performers. Everyone is very, very clear on their KPIs, on their numbers, on their uh, exactly what they need to be hit. Big advantage of like a performance-based business is that 
you could sell this for life changing money. The like the boutique sort of businesses that I spoke about earlier on, the lifestyle businesses, you can sell them. It might not necessarily change your life forever that you, you can just afford to, to be able to stop working for the rest of your days, depending on how old you are. Um, whereas performance based business with that many people in your and, and your revenue per employee is high, like 200, 300, 400,000 plus per employee, like you sell that for a lot of money, right? You can do a nice exit there and you can i think we should do a series on this guys so i think what we should do is close the the conversation today with a question for you if you've listened to pete go through this and you'd like support on taking your business from wherever it is on pete's you know pete's journey to the next level just write the word structure to us personally so structure what's the best way you can do that do you know what do you know what guys if you like this follow me on instagram it's pete underscore taylor ben and i are both started recently to actively grow our personal instagram so mine is pete underscore taylor yeah ben, coach benjamin owen follow us i talk a lot about business ben talks a lot about the stuff in your head and if you want to talk to either of us personally reach out on either of our platforms there best way thank you so much for listening today guys and we'll see you on the next podcast